Sandy here. Welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to be playing with some fun Brutus Monroe products today. Now this is a stamp set. It's called Underwater Friends. I also pulled out my circle dies, some vellum, the Weatherwood paper collection, aqua pigments, and some watercolor paper. I have an idea, so let's see what I can do. All right, you guys, so I am just going to let you know up front that my original plan did not happen. It uh, was not turning out the way that I thought it was going to, and um, I just went ahead and kept going and ended up with a layout that I was super happy with. So I'm taking that background stamp set and I am inking it up with some Brutus Monroe embossing ink. Now this is the heat resistant vellum that you can get in the Brutus Monroe shop. Um, it does not warp as much as regular vellum when you heat it up with your embossing tool. So I am using the Raven Detail Embossing Powder, um, which is almost gone. I probably need to order one. Probably should order the big jar of it since I do use so much of it. So I go ahead and emboss that up. It's like magic. Ah, oh, makes me so happy. Then I'm going to go ahead and get out another type of paper as well. So I'm just going to uh, place this watercolor paper down here, ink up my stamp again, and go ahead and get that bad boy uh, all nice and embossing inked up. So again, we're using the Bruce Monroe embossing powder. Oh, look at that stuff, guys. I love embossing, okay? I love it. Now, I have come to accept the fact that I'm just going to be a slob when it comes to embossing powders. Like, that's just the way it is. I don't have any way to change it. I'm a slob when it comes to embossing powder. And I'm cool with it. Um, I'm having fun with it, and that is really all that matters. Um, if you are super neat and efficient when it comes to your embossing powder and you love it, hey, more power to you. Uh, but me, no, I'm a slob. So now I also have it on some regular uh, cardstock. Now I'm not exactly sure if this is the water. Nope, I think that's the regular cardstock. So I do emboss them all in the black embossing powder. Um, just because I want some contrast because I'm going to be cutting out uh, these circles with the foundation's dies and then I'm going to be painting, painting them in with these fabulous, fabulous, fabulous aqua pigments. As you can see, uh, the tray on the left has a lot of aqua, aqua pigments in it. Um, and then, of course, I have my neutrals in this other little tray because they all don't fit. Now, I am thinking about rearranging my room um, a little bit so that they're not in a tray. Or if they're in a tray, right now they're just sitting on top of a, of a bookshelf. So, I am going to use a variety of colors. I am using a smaller paint brush. Now, these are paint brushes that my grandmother used to use when she was uh, a ceramics uh, instructor. So, um, they have sentimental value. Um, they are, they are, uh, ceramic brushes. So I am using a variety of colors, um, to just go ahead and fill in each of these animals. And you can tell that I, uh, die cut out a variety of the shapes. So that turns out gorgeous. Now, this little Hail Hydra guy right here, um, I'm going to put him in a darker color. Now, the fun thing with the aqua pigments is you can layer them up so that the color sits on top of each other and gets darker. So if you're not happy with how dark it is, let it dry and add another layer. And that is a beautiful thing to be able to uh, darken or lighten your colors because the only thing you need to do to lighten it is to add a little bit of water to it. And yeah, like I said, guys, that is a beautiful thing to be able to have one color and have multiple shades, almost infinite shades of that color um, by just using, you know, some water to lighten it a little bit. 
I am dipping straight into the aqua pigment bottle. If you are worried about cross contamination or can contamination whatsoever, use that little dropper, put it down on a palette, uh, and then you will be set. But like I said, I'm kind of a slob, guys, so it's not really bothering me uh, whatsoever. Now I am using uh, multiple shades, multiple kinds of aqua pigments. There are creamy aqua pigments. Uh, there are sparkle aqua pigments. Uh, you can probably tell there are even some neon aqua pigments by uh, the colors over here in this tray. Now one of my favorite things to do with an aqua pigment is to paint on vellum. It just turns out so beautifully when you stamp and you emboss and then you paint on it. Oh, it just is gorgeous. It's one of my favorite things. So my original plan uh, was to use these circles and um, do some fun things with them. And I was backing them uh, because I thought, I was like, you know what? You know what I'm going to do? Um... I'm going to make a super fun tag book and um, it it would have turned out had I not made my circle so small. I should have kept them all large and it would have turned out um, and then that way I had like the weathered wood paper on the back of all of my undersea things because I kind of felt like I felt a little bit like an old dock and then when I realized um, that it was really just too small to do what I want it to do, I had to come up with another plan. So now i am got, you know, all this weathered wood on the back of all the, these beautiful colored pieces. So I went ahead and used the circle dies some, one more time. I die cut my photos. So I have three photos from um, the seas. Uh, over in Epcot in Walt Disney World. So I have a, an up close of Bruce, who is the shark in Finding Nemo. Um, I have a far away and then I have another shark. Now this technique is what I like to call the splat technique. So I have this one brush that I do this with and it stays a mess. Um, it stays looking like this. It's, it's definitely a mess. Um, so what I do is I take my aqua pigments, I dip it directly onto the brush bristles, and I just pounce and splat my ink uh, straight on down. And I like this because I like the look of this. I like the textured background. Um, I just I just enjoy it. It does remind me back when we used to uh, do all the faux texture on the walls in the homes. Do you guys remember doing that? You like grabbed plastic bags and kind of faux textured your walls. It's kind of what it reminds me of. Now I decided to use some of the pearl, uh, the pearl. I think it's pearl. Let me just double check so that I'm telling you the right thing. Yes, it is pearl. It is the pearl aqua pigment. And I decided to put that up at the top um, just so, you know, it was a little bit brighter up at the top. So when you're in the ocean, um, the light goes through the water and it's brighter up at the top. And the farther down you go, it's darker and darker. So I just wanted that little extra bit of lightness up at the top to kind of give it a nod to the ocean. And then I take all of my circles and I'm just figuring out how I want them arranged on the page. I am going to have some of the circles kind of overlapping so that they go off the edge of the page. Um, and then some of the circles are going to be straight inside the page. So I'm taking a look at this. I'm like, man, this would have been such an awesome little tag book if I would have used these huge circles. Why did I not use these huge circles? Uh, but then I was like, you know what? This is great because I have an, a layout complete um, for my Disney trip and that's fantastic. Now if you guys have been to Disney and you've been to the seas with Nemo and friends and you have seen Bruce the shark there uh, you will know that there are always people inside Bruce the shark getting their picture taken like they're sitting inside of his mouth. Well thank you COVID um, and 
this case, nobody was allowed to go over there. So I got great pictures of Bruce the shark with nobody around them. It was fantastic. So um, even though I couldn't get my head in there and I couldn't sit inside Bruce, I got some great photos. So I was, I was you know, pleased with that. So I am just going to adhere these circles down. I'm making sure not to make my wood grain from the weathered wood paper pack. I'm making sure not to have those all face in the same direction. I want the wood to be random. I want it to feel kind of like an old, um, kind of kind of an old dilapidated dock. That's the look I'm going for. That's what I want you, to, when you see this, that's what I hope you feel. I hope you feel like the ocean and like a dock. Not that there's really docks on the ocean too much, but you know, there are bays and inlets and things like that. So that's at least what I was going for. Now I do grab these Simple Stories foam letter stickers and the bulk of my title is going to be Bruce and I go ahead and put that across um, this beautiful blue weathered wood. Um, I grab some tiny little letter stickers from my stash and finish off the title where it says Bruce and his big mouth um, because that is a big mouth. There are rows and rows and rows of sharp pointy teeth and Bruce has a big mouth. So now I'm looking at this. I'm loving it. I'm thinking if, you know, what else can I add to this? Like this is beautiful, but I want to give it a little bit more. So I grabbed some decorative details and these are clear little baubles. And I just decide to take some liquid adhesive. This liquid adhesive will dry clear. And I just randomly put little dots all around the layout. And then I'm going to take them and glue them down. And now I have little bubbles in my ocean as well. So I have like the dilapidated wooden dock. I have the little bubbles and I have the big mean shark. So I've got an entire seascape going on with all of my little sea animals. Um, who knows if they all actually live under the sea together in the same area. I won't even pretend to know those kind of facts but they look great together on this layout. So there it is, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for joining me. I hope you will try out some aqua pigments as well. And I will see you again real soon for another video.